Hey there, Adam here. Today I wanted to talk about whether or not you should be using Monday.com in 2023. Uh, just for some background, I've been using it, I guess, for about two years now. I have a whole playlist on Monday.com with a couple of different ways to use it. I, I would suggest starting there if you're really interested, but I do want to do a quick overview. Uh, I am a North Carolina attorney. We have a small law firm with two lawyers and five, well, yeah, five full-time staff, one, one or two part-time right now. I, so we use it within our firm for some very specific tasks. And my suggestion is, you know, long story short, yes, you should use it if you are a small team. I, I would not suggest using it if you are just working by yourself. I, I would also suggest if you are using it to learn how to use the automations. Otherwise, you can probably go with something easier and cheaper. I, that's the rule too long didn't watch. And I know that's bad for watch time. So uh, stick around so I can sort of show you what's going on pricing how I use it, and uh, really sort of a basic understanding of what you want to be doing with this program if you're going to use it. All right, so Monday.com, it is advertised as basically a project management tool. Task management, uh, project management, and I, they've started to build out more uh, customer uh, relations management type software, CRM, uh, and uh, they're definitely trying to go for a wide range of uses as opposed to very specific range of uses. Take that as you will. The pricing is, is actually quite transparent, which is a nice plus compared to a lot of other programs where you have to call them to get an enterprise pricing. So the way it works is you have to pay for at least three seats if you want to do premium, which is a whole different rant. There's another video in the playlist below. Uh, about why I think that's silly. So you have to buy a specific number of seats and then it's a cost per seat. So we currently use the 10 seat plan and then we use Pro. So we are paying at 160 a month, I believe. Uh, and you can pay monthly, yearly, yearly is cheaper. And the reason we use Pro is because it allows all of these automations. So I'm gonna jump into that briefly, but if you're going to use this program for any real sort of uh, Good use of it, basically, I would suggest expecting to, to pay for the 16 seat a month or potentially the 10 seat a month plans. So that's the pricing. So pricing pretty in range with other tools of a similar nature. All right. So now let me get into the actual program. You're going to see some sensors and uh, grayed out areas because it has client names. Can't show you that. Okay. So here's the home screen from Monday.com. Uh, you're going to see that it's got workspaces, and each one of these workspaces can be used for different tasks. Uh, I'm going to show you the one that we use the most, and quite simply, this this page by itself, the way I've got it set up now, uh, is a perfect example of how to use Monday in a very efficient way. So in my business, we have to do medical records requests, which is, uh, I do personal injury law, so we have to get medical records from providers and uh, this area will be grayed out, but that this is, this has client names, this has uh, provider names, like different hospitals and pharmacies and whatever else. Uh, the way this basically works is we send out requests, the medical providers usually ignore us for a while, and then we have to, so you'll see initial request at the top, and then we'll scroll down and you're going to see a first follow-up, meaning I've sent it once, they haven't responded, then you're going to see uh, they denied for some reason, uh, they say they don't have records for whatever reason, and then there's a second follow-up, and then eventually, if they still won't give us what we're supposed to give us, there's a stuck. Stuck being can't get it for whatever reason, and we have one specific person in our organization who handles it. So it will slowly work its way down the list, and then if you get to all the way to the bottom, complete, they sit here for a while, and then they are archived and disappear. So this is a workflow for a very discrete type of tasks, uh, and it has a couple different people who use it, our medical records person, and then also the people, uh, other staff members, such as our paralegals who will assign them tasks. So the automations are really the, the key to using Monday. So here are, and you're, you see some of them are uh, disabled for various reasons, but essentially the way these automations will work is when certain conditions are met, or when the statuses are changed from requested to followed up to stuck to done to whatever, they will move and they will send emails and notifications and change due dates based upon these automations. So the automations really are the key to making this program work correctly. Without automations, you might as well just use 
you know, a piece of paper or a Google calendar or something else uh, to track them. You'll see the second most used board is this deadlines board. And you can, we basically have it so it's set up to send reminders on certain deadlines on certain uh, items. And it will send, you, send it to you as an email, it will send it to you as a message in here, however you want to set it up. Uh, the world is your oyster. So really the best use of this program is for a discrete, narrow, sort of repeatable processes. I have not found it to be great for using checklists. So it's not a great checklist piece of software. Really what it is, is it is a, a sort of a discrete tasks. So you really get into a, a process. So you, if the process is repeatable, you know, it, it's sort of the old small firm or, you know, I guess it's an MBA maxim. Uh, if you do something more than two times, it should be written down. If you do it more than 10, then, you know, it, it should be automated to some degree. The process should be automated with the policies and procedures. So the idea here is, is we use it for stuff like medical records for deadlines that are, are very repeatable and uh, automated in that we want them to be done the same way in the same order every single time. So if you are very uh, process centric, then this will be a, a good program for you. I also have a couple other use cases off of my playlist. Let me pull that up real quick for you, just to give you an idea as to some other potential use cases. So I've used it for doing this escalating follow-up list is very similar to what I showed you on the uh, uh, medical records. So it essentially goes down the list as you do follow-ups and then eventually it gets to this, the point of it being stuck at which point perhaps uh, the CEO or manager or whoever sort of steps in because they get a notification saying something's really not going right here. Uh, recurring tasks are basically you can set it up to hit done and then it will set the deadline out 30 days and then you, you have to do it again. Uh, the tracking is okay. Uh, you can tell what's overdue on, on the list just by clicking on the dates and seeing what date, if it's passed. Uh, it's not the best for that. So as far as tracking, if you're like a, a manager who really wants to see if stuff's overdue, it's possible, but it's not super well built for that. Uh, another one, there's my rant on uh, why it's so expensive. Automated emails is another thing you can do. You can have it set up to set an email every 30 days. You can have it follow a set procedure. Uh, you can have, and you basically just enter the email in there uh, and do it that way. Uh, another sort of useful potential way to use this program, and really, again, if you can figure out how to use the automations, which let me sort of show you some of the options. So if we go to add new automation, I, you got lots and lots of options. I, and then you can, there's actually a template. So here's some of the basic ones. You can change it to different people, change the time periods. You can have it send emails. You can have it create new tasks. There are just a near infinite number of different ways you can structure this. Uh, and you can create custom columns. Uh, so really, if you have some computer science background or you are just a very uh, logical, data-oriented individual, these automations are great. Uh, I know that there are... Uh, you know, there's people you can consult to help you create automations. Like there, are, there are people on basically the Monday.com marketplace that will help you build stuff for your business. Uh, you're getting into a little more expensive and uh, custom uh, usage at that point. But yeah, I mean, you can do it if you want to do it that way. I, but you know, I, I do think that these this playlist will get you started. This will show you how to do some very basic stuff. I and I, yeah, I think you know that's a real easy way to do it. So. Yeah, with that sort of being said, you know, should you use Monday in 2023? Yes. You know, you, you can see I've been using it for a while now. I, I, you know, I used it for probably six months before I made some videos on it because I just found it to be so useful. Uh, it is not our primary or single uh, sort of task management. We also use our, uh, it's called a case management system specific to lawyers that we use for checklists. Again, this is not a checklist program. It's a sort of a processes or workflows type uh, deal. It's good for individual processes that are repeatable. It's not good if you have to, it technically has a dependency feature where you can say, if this, then that, you know, if you, if, the, if you complete this task, go to the next, it does have that functionality. I don't find it to be terribly 
uh, robust, and you can't really structure it in such a way that it will, uh, you know, be repeatable. Uh, so I would say if you're trying to use this for very specific, like start to finish, and you have a very complicated system or process that requires, you know, like a logic tree, three or four different uh, choices that have to be made, uh, then not great for that. Very good for a process that has a couple choices that you can just use, basically use that, uh, what I was showing you with that sort of status menu, or if you just need to go to second request, stuck, not working, done, not a patient. I, oh, whoops. So, you know, if you want to just have a couple different choices, works great for that. But if it's like you complete something and then it needs to spit out another choice, I, not so useful for that, not I, my ideal tool for that process. So I hope that this was helpful. Uh, I know this was a tiny bit rambly there at the end. Uh, really what I wanted to say was, you know, it's, if you are interested in this program, watch some of my videos. I, you know, it's, it hasn't changed. It's gotten better. They've cleaned up some of the automations. They've included new features, most of which I don't use, <laughs> but they do exist. They, there is some additional functionality that I have not picked up or used because I haven't needed it. Uh, but I, you know, the stuff that I showed in the, the, the earlier videos in this playlist still exists and I still use. I, so if you watch a couple of those and that seems like functionality that'd be useful to you, then I think you should check it out. Uh, there's a link in the in the description below to sign up for Monday. If you click on that and you sign up, then it helps me, helps the channel. I so I would definitely appreciate that. But if not, I let me know if you have any questions about specific use cases. I you know I definitely am interested in making more videos on Monday at some point once I get back into the flow of things. I've been making videos on other topics such as Obsidian and. Uh, a couple other things. Uh, we're using uh, Microsoft uh, Teams now to some degree, which I, I may do a video like this on that at some point. All right. Well, I hope this was useful, and uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks. Bye.